this, this, this granny, she was a granny, walked into our shop and she said, do you know what? She said, you're at this donkey's ears. <laughs> so we are. She said, I remember coming in buying the pottery in the workshop up where uh, the showroom we had up at the workshop. I remember buying that pottery with my granny and I am bringing my grandchildren in now to buy the pottery with me. I mean, if you think about it, the generations of that, do you know, and st we're still, we're still at it. Goes to show, maybe lads, would you get a life? <laughs> I think we're the, probably the oldest pottery in Ireland at this stage, oldest handmade pottery. My dad set it up in 1962 where he studied pottery in London. Sarah went off to study in, in Dublin. I went to work doing an apprenticeship with Nicholas Moss and these people. And when we got so busy, Sarah then left Dublin as a trained potter and she came down to work with myself and Ned. He became, he was my father, but he became sort of my mentor and my friend at that stage. So I kind of used to call him Ned work it every day and I have my own dog, my little dog Google, um, and he's here with me uh, all day and I'm throwing pots and listening to the radio and talking to myself. Our, our, our workshop does quite a bit of character in it because I suppose it could be argued I don't clean it enough. And what happens, we work with terracotta clay and the terracotta, there's, there's red iron on it and it just seems to coat everything. Every pot that we make is made by us and every piece of pottery is part of us. A mug has to be able to be drank from. The plates can be used, they can be eaten from, the cups can be, you can drink your tea, your coffee, your cocoa. I learned all that and I'd hate to see the pottery just being put up on a wall or put on a shelf and just left there because it's supposed to be used. The glaze itself is the secret end of it. Um, we make that ourselves. It is completely and utterly our own recipes. We get a glaze, a base of a clay called a frit, and we build it. We build our own glass from that. So all these things meld to produce a pottery that you can use. When if something is actually properly handmade and designed and made in this country, that's handmade. And every piece we make is totally different. It, uh, no matter if I've opened a thousand kilns, the ovens, every one I open, it's just looking at a treasure trove. You don't know how it's going to react. You don't know how it's fired, because they always fire differently, they cook differently, the glazes run differently and everything. You're always looking for perfection. You're always striving, you're pushing on to get, and you look at a piece of pottery and glaze and again. That's lovely now. How did I do, how did I do that now? Well, I say, you know, people might argue, is that I think you're getting worse. But um, you are always striving to keep going, to get better, to get better. And and that what keeps it keeps the fire within you. My dad always said to me, Alan, he said, you'll be at this till they pull you out of here or till you can't do it anymore. And you know what? I think he's right. I think it's it's a magnificent job. It's, every time I open the kiln on when it's cooled down, there's a wonderful feeling of satisfaction.